Hey, good morning. This is Mark Miller in New York City. We've got Brian Fox up in New Hampshire and Shannon Leitz in San Diego. And what we want to do today is talk about the announcement of the Struts 2 vulnerability that's been getting a lot of uh, play this week. Brian, good morning to you. Good morning. When, uh, when we first started seeing the Struts 2 announcements here, what did you find as you were looking through the central repository data to find out what was going on? Um, yeah, we, we found, we, we looked back to see, of course, uh, as we usually do to see, uh, you know, how prevalent the particular affected versions are. Um, you know, Struts, despite years of, of issues like this, still has uh, a significant uh, amount of usage. We, we found that um, there were a total of 13.1 million downloads of uh, Struts. Uh, components from Central uh, in the calendar year 2016 um, uh, of about 2,000 different uh, individual modules, and uh, at least a quarter of those uh, were of vulnerable versions, um, which make up about 35% of all the struts downloads. So even despite the fact that this isn't the first high-profile struts um, attack that's been exploited in the wild, um, it's still still quite popular. Um, is somewhat not surprising given that struts itself is a framework and it's not really simple to just switch off of it. Uh, it basically uh, equates to rewriting your entire application uh, or at least the front end and significant part of the, the business logic flow needs to be rewritten to get off of something like struts. So um, it, it's certainly a challenge for users. Is that one of the reasons that people are still using struts? Is it so embedded in their applications, it's hard to move off of it? Yeah, that's exactly the reason. It's uh, it's the the application framework that inter that that drives all of the logic back and forth between the client and the server. And so, changing that to something else, some other MVP pattern, um, is is a significant forklift of the of the application. So we've seen lots of people try to contain it. I don't think many people are starting new applications on, on struts these days, but it, as the numbers show, it still has a significant um, population out there. I'm going to share my screen because we've got some data that uh, you had pulled up, you and your team had pulled up. Can you talk a little bit about what we're seeing here? Can you see that on screen now? Uh, not yet. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that was the data that I, I just kind of went through. Um, you know, we... We, we see this a lot, you know, we try to get the message out and help our customers make sure that, you know, for projects that are using struts uh, to make sure that you're using the right versions. Um, and uh, in this case, you need to get up to the latest and greatest uh, struts too. Um, this particular vulnerability does not affect struts one. However, struts one um, has many high profile, well-known remotely code exploits uh, uh, on their own, I, I'm not aware of any versions of Struts One that are, you know, quote unquote, safe to use at this point. Brian, to, for those that aren't aware of the work that you've done with Central, can you give us a little bit of background on your affiliation with Central Repository? Type's always been a so you know. Uh, quite literally running IT ops for the central repository and, you know, keeping scrapers at bay and making sure the machines keep running and, and uh, you know, keeping it secure and all those types of things. Okay, great. Uh, when we're looking at to this, the update that we had yesterday on remediation guidance, are there specific things that you're recommending that people do right now? Yeah, the first first uh, thing, you know, is obviously to find out if you're using one of the affected versions, not all of the versions are uh, vulnerable. There was a, a change sort of somewhat recently in the code path that uh, introduced and or changed the, 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 the way this uh, exploit comes about. Um, you know, obviously moving to the latest version of struts and getting your uh, application redeployed would be the, the preference. Um, but uh, unlike some previous struts vulnerabilities, in this instance, there are a few configuration changes you can make um, potentially to swap out the the parsers that are affected here um, to get at least a, a short-term fix, and um, there there are ways to uh, to try and filter the input to look for um, expressions. If you scroll down, Mark, you can see some of the the remediation advice that our team put together. 
Mm -hmm. Let me see. Tell me when you can see the change there. Is that changing for you? Yep. Okay, there you go. Right down here, the recommendation kind of highlights this, right? So, um, you know, there, there are ways to swap out that parser. Um, depending on which version of struts you're using, you can swap it out and, and get some, hopefully, immediate release relief. Um, but, you know, what's unfortunate with this particular vulnerability, it seems like right about the same time that the disclosure went out, the proof of concept code got out. And um, I'm not sure how that happened exactly, uh, but we've seen this before um, with other high profile struts things uh, about six years ago, um, mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the struts team did the right thing. They did the responsible disclosure. They fixed it, got it out there. Um, and the attackers started exploiting it almost immediately. Um, you know, we've talked about this in the past that the attackers often have the first mover advantage because it's easier to just simply start exploiting this by broadcasting it around the internet than it is to go patch your application and get it into production, right? So the, the meantime, the remediate in these types of scenarios is, is really key um, because, you know, almost immediately there, there were reports of people being uh, exploited in the wild by this vulnerability. Great, thank you. For those that are watching, if you go to the Sonotype blog, this is featured on the blog so that you can have all this information. Shannon, welcome. It looks like you got set up here. Thanks. Yep, I'm set up. Yeah. Shannon and I were talking last night, Brian, and I wanted to bring her on to talk from a practitioner standpoint. Um, so from a DevSecOps perspective, um, you know, one of the things that we've looked at is um, trying to reduce the footprint. If you have this installed on a system and you're not using it, make sure to delete it because the system can become um, more vulnerable as a result of having it simply on the system. The second piece of the puzzle really is, um, you know, if you need to make sure that you have time to change code or whatnot, adding a surflet filter to your application can assist in reducing your attack footprint. And then, you know, finally, um, upgrading the application uh, so that you can use a different version of stress is really recommended. So I think those three pieces of the puzzle are really important, you know, obviously from a much broader audience perspective. Also, um, you know, scanning your front end surface, making sure that you're not vulnerable to to this uh, particular vulnerability is absolutely critical. So if you don't have that capability, um, it, I think that using a tool similar to the one that Sonotype's uh, providing is really imperative to look at your application. I think, and then the final piece of the, um, you know, the construct here is the third party libraries that you might be using may also be introducing stress into your environment without you necessarily knowing. And so it's uh, really critical to ensure that you've looked at your code base and you understand your third party libraries and what they're using as well. Brian, that opens up another point here too, is how deep would the dependencies be that would actually be uh, surfacing this kind of vulnerability? Well, in, 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 a, in a general case, they could be anywhere um, as we saw with the commons collections one, that was certainly the case where it was often very deep and or in the application server itself um, and merely its presence uh, I think in a line, so it's um, that I suppose. But you know, the fact that it is a framework makes it even harder to to stamp it out. It's uh, it's not a case that you can just go you know kick out some unused uh, third party dependency. In this case, it, it it might like literally shut down your application. Um, but you know, you, the the other thing that's worth pointing out here is you know that obviously picking the better components and, and keeping track of those things is key. You know, in, in cases like this, you know, a, a defense in depth approach truly is uh, really valuable because this case it's exploiting, um, it's executing code as the application server, right? And so um, if, if you're running your application server in a lockdown, uh, as a lockdown user, um, you know, while it's annoying, the damage may be contained. However, if, if this uh, process is running as root, they get access to your system and can do whatever they want and, and hop off from there, right? So um, this is, is, you know, one of these cases where, uh, you know, the process really matters and, and the best practices for how you're actually running your application can have profound impacts when, when something like this comes along. Sorry, Mark. Um, you you know, I, I think that every team out there is, you know, actively doing what they need to be diligent um, across every company that I've heard. So just from a community perspective, I think that um, everybody's doing what they can, you know, um, 
building a, uh, a understanding of this comes from actually understanding the vulnerability itself. And so, yeah. you know, building your own auto router is something that some of the security practitioners are out there are doing. And, you know, I think that that's actually very useful in understanding how the vulnerability may play out against your environment. Great. You had mentioned also in passing the application health check. Oh, Brian, that is a free tool, right, that we're providing to the community for things like this? That's right. Yeah, you can get that on our, our website um, and it, it it runs it locally and then, and then provides you a full bill of materials with all of the information uh, that you saw earlier uh, on, the, on the blog post. Great. So, for any vulnerability. So if you're, if you're using struts, um, this may not be the only one that you have to deal with. This is just the latest one. That's right. One of the things that we get as a question on this tool too, just to get it out front, are we sending any data to our servers? People are concerned about privacy of data and things like that. Yeah, no, um, that was one of the factors when we built it. So we, we fingerprint all of the components and, and create basically one-way hashes of various elements of the, the things inside your application. And that's all that gets sent. Um, we don't we don't get your binaries. We don't get your source code or anything like that. So literally, it's just um, a bunch of hashes, and then we look them up. And so if we know what those hashes are, if we can do the match, we tell you what they are, and then we tell you what we know about it. But for example, if it if it's a hash of some internal jar, it's just a hash to us. We don't know what it is. All right, cool. Uh, Shannon, as lead of DevSecOps, pretty much. Uh, in the world. I mean, that's what you do traveling the world talking about DevSecOps. When announcements like this happen, I mean, what what goes through in your brain? I mean, do you think of it on a global scale? Do you think of uh, internally first handling? Where does your mind go when an announcement like this happens? You know, I, I think it goes straight to the fact that I want safer software sooner. And this is a very serious issue. Um, you know, Struts uh, was I have a deep um, appreciation of stress and what it really can mean from the standpoint of an application. Um, in my past, I had to clean up a, a major breach as a result of a stress uh, issue. And so I, I think that it's really critical to make sure that um, as a community, we understand how to eradicate this, share the knowledge, share the tools, um, share the understanding. And I think that that's um, where my head goes to immediately. I think, you know, that knowledge, that understanding is really critical to bring back into your company. But primarily, you know, from a DevSecOps Foundation perspective, I think that I am really um, interested in making sure that developers out there are understanding that there's deep empathy for the fact that these um, vulnerabilities are critical and, you know, trying to eradicate them is no easy matter, you know. And I think that it's also about if you can do anything to mitigate it, right away, that's, that's actually the most important part of the puzzle. Brian, when we look historically at an event like this, what's the long tail here? I mean, I'm seeing, say, Heartbleed as an example. There's still hundreds of thousands of publicly accessible Heartbleed instances out. What do you see going on with Struts 2 now? What do you anticipate will be happening? I, I think um, that the people that are prepared to be able to swap this out and are, are formed will will respond. I think we're going to see a new class of people who, for whatever reason, forgot about or missed the last uh, stuff that are suddenly becoming aware of this again. Um, you know, but uh, given how hard it is to change uh, the, something as fundamental as struts, uh, I'm not believing that we're just going to see you know, this disappear overnight, the, the, the evidence shows, you know, what, what was the number 34, 40, 35% of all struts downloads in 2016 were of vulnerable versions. And some of those versions have been vulnerable for 10 plus years, right? So um, I see it all the time when I, when I go to conferences and I talk to people, there's always one or two people in the room who uh, are using it and um, are completely unaware how risky that is. So, um, I think all, a lot of the vulnerabilities of late, especially in struts, all kind of derive from the, the same root cause, which is the, the orgonal, the object graph notation language that struts uses to, to evaluate expressions similar to the code that was in Commons collection there. You know, the intent there is to be able to instantiate objects and execute them. That's why that stuff exists. And so a lot of these um, struts two vulnerabilities are all just basically flavors of the same root problem, which is tricking the system into taking input and executing it. 
Um, and, and in this case, they just they found the new avenue, which is to, to use the content type. You know, previous avenues were, um, you know, other request passing parameters and, and things like that. So, you know, th there probably are ways to secure the systems to look for certain types of expressions where they don't belong, you know, filtering, pre-filtering and things like that. And I think, you know, if, if you're going to be stuck on struts for a while, I think you need to start thinking, how can you, you know, prevent this class of problem? Because this is just the latest um, vector for the same, same class of problem. Shanna, anything on that? No, I, I think he's totally right. I think that, you know, um, we all have libraries and applications out there, you know, regardless of what's going on. Understanding their attack surface is really critical. You know, doing things like attack maps, making sure that you have an understanding of your surface area and having mitigating controls is really necessary. Um, you know, it's, it's really uh, interesting. If you have a WAF, you can put in certain rules. Um, you can use a, a servlet to be able to filter the applications. And I think that having some strategy is really important to understand how much you can leverage a component like this. Right. It, it's obviously key to know what, what you have, like we talked about before, making sure you understand what that surface area actually is. It's shocking uh, that we see so many people have simply no clue what's actually in their applications. So, you know, knowledge is power in this case, and then being able to put those uh, mitigating controls, you know, comes from understanding what that surface area actually is. Yeah, and as we're, uh, we're closing up here, what do you want to see happen as a result of this? What would you, what's your recommendation? What are you hoping to see? Uh, how the community responds? What are you looking for? Yeah, I think if you're a developer, um, primarily as a security practitioner, my guidance is to go out, take a look at your applications, understand its attack surface, understand how you've got um, your logging set up, ensure that you've gone through the, the security hierarchy of needs and you've got the right containment profile for an application that's using a library like this. And then ultimately, um, making sure you have the right mitigation strategy to match your attack surface and your attack map. Uh, doing so will have a profound effect on being able to deal with um, any of the zero days that are out there. Brian, it looks like you were nodding in agreement on a lot of things she was saying there. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's like I said before, it, it stems from understanding what's really inside your software. Without that, you can't do any of the things that Shannon's talking about. You can't really exploits might or things to be guarding against. So being able to understand that and then, you know, deal with it and then make better choices as you go forward is, is key. It's kind of what we're all about at Silver Type. Okay. That's it from my end, unless you two have something else you'd like to cover on this incident here. Great. Shannon, thank you for pulling over on the freeway there and uh, giving us your time. Shannon's literally on the freeway in San Diego right now. <laughs> I'm actually off the freeway now, but yes. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Brian, as always, good to talk to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.